listening to Los Angeles' most dangerous group. Listen, 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 listen. The Caliente Show on Dash Radio. Caliente show and today's special guest not only my good friend but it's a breakthrough actor who's been in shows like American Crime Story American Crime <laughs> Hey bro Yo you're my you friend you're supposed to know everything I've American done. Story you know what I'm thinking Hey bro about? introduce yourself bro what's happening man What's up my name is Johnny Ortiz check me out on the Caliente show loving it living my life and just check out my lifestyle yeah. What's up, guys? It's your girl Synergy with the Caliente Show. Today's special guest is not only a good friend of mine, but an actor of movies such as McFarland USA and American Crime and ABC Emmy Award, Emmy Award a winning TV show. Today with us, Johnny Ortiz. Woo! Woo! Johnny. Johnny, I need your autograph, What's bro. What's up, Johnny? Money. How you doing, Johnny? I'm fabulous right here, chilling, enjoying the... Good Gucci live in the high life, you know, just loving it. Nice. Yeah. So, you know what? You've been actually doing really, really well for yourself with this um, past years. Can you tell us a little bit of, of the projects that you've been working on? Well, you know, I'm just happy to be working. Um, I just have two TV shows. Well, two movies. One, uh, well, both on HBO. One's called Icebox with uh, co starring with a kid from uh, Coco, Anthony Gonzalez. The producers are James L. Brooks, the co creator of The Simpsons. So. Mm -hmm. That's something exciting too, and it talks about real stuff, like stuff that talks about about the uh, the issue of uh, keeping families uh, together and the immigration and everything, huh? Correct. Everybody check that out it's on HBO right now. That's called Icebox. Um, I really actually I really enjoy that 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 movie. It hit, you know, it hit home for me being an immigrant to this country, um, and seeing you know all of the legalities and versus humanity that's happening over at the border. So, um, great job with that movie. Um, can I ask you? I've heard through the grapevine that you are involved in a super top secret project. And that is the new movie of the hit TV show, Breaking Bad. Can you confirm with us here at the Caliente Show that that is happening, that you are rocking with Brian Cranston in that new movie? You know, I can confirm that there is a rumor. <laughs> hey, bro, if you are, you're not allowed to talk about that. He's right not now. giving me anything, huh? Well, I just know that there's a rumor of them, you know, they've been talking about it, but um, what I thought I know Heisenberg about, died, bro. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> How's her boom? You know, I just wanted to go either way. I am blessed to be part of this um, film. Um, and just to be part of it, I mean, I can't really say too much. They made me sign the NDA. So you know how that They'll goes. come and get you if you do. They come and get me, Fado. <laughs> they, come, they come in like SWAT, bro. <laughs> Keep right, it gonna, in the door. I'm going to let the ladies of the panel ask you a couple of questions over here. Lala. I mean, Lala. Which one was your favorite? <laughs> Layla. Layla. My bad. It's too Which, <laughs> which one was your favorite role Back. in the movies that you were? You know, I did a movie called Soy Nero where I played the main uh, lead on it. And it was filmed in Mexico and here in the United States. And... I think it's just playing the soldier, um, being able to train, they put me through a one month of training and really getting in fit and knowing how um, the M16 works and all this military stuff, coding works and all that. I think it was just fantastic to learn stuff through throughout doing movies. And that was a role that I was really proud of. It's, a, it's actually on HBO. It actually went to the uh, Berlin Audi Film Festival. It opened up over there in 2000. 16 and 15, I believe. I was the only Hispanic representing Latin America international that year. All right. That's awesome, man. Um, tell us a little bit more about how you got into the business because I know you have an amazing coming up story. Um, and you are a LA native, am I right? Right? Uh, and so tell us a little bit more about how you got into acting. Well, first of all, I grew up in Island Park, Northeast. That was where I was born and raised in LA. And growing up, you know, I only saw myself in three places. I saw myself in dead in a wheelchair in prison because of my whole family were involved in gangs. But like, I always wanted to break that chain. So I always had the desire to be an actor. And I remember being five years old and calling 411 and asking how do you become an actor? <laughs> and the person that answered was just, just like, gave me a number and they called the number the next day. It was a false number, but it was, I guess, that hope of having it, you know? And I always pursued trying to look for acting classes, but being young, I got into Juana Hall and I did like a year and a half. I actually graduated in Juana Hall. After coming out of Juana Hall, um, I went to this nonprofit called Casa Cero No Cero Uno that gave me free acting classes. And after free acting classes there, 
the teacher became like my life coach and he helped me get an agent and my first audition was Southland the cop show and I ended up booking it so it was something exciting it was something fun and ever that after that I did a short film called Nanny I won the Studio Academy Award and that kind of put me in the map with a lot of agents and managers and at that time my agent had a, her husband had a stroke so he had to leave the business so when she left the business she, she took over uh, his business and left her business so i was left with no agent but with a bunch of business cards so growing up you know in the neighborhood you always have these problems with your like dad i mean like i didn't grow up with a wealthy dad or a person that had everything and growing up i guess um in these circumstances i just kept pushing and kept going you know that's all they say in the streets you just keep pushing and keep moving forward and i did and i ended up calling one of these business cards which was with my manager now and she helped me get my first audition which was mcfarland usa and it was which like also disney, booked yeah the disney movie hit and came out in 2015 worldwide and it was something i was proud of it was my first time filming in a big set and it was like four months of filming, one month of training. Adidas sponsored us, it was it was exciting. It was something that I never thought, you know, I went from the hood to Hollywood. Right, and actually well, that one was an amazing movie. I love that movie. It was a real story too. Mm -hmm. Yes, based on the real story, we actually got to go to the place in McFarland where it was the time where it was filmed and we got to build a playground with uh, the whole cast and Disney people and Kevin Gossett was there and we built it like in five hours of playground for McFarland. Wow, so that's amazing. And I guess just to be part of the acting and just to be able to breathe is I'm blessed for that. You know, um, I have a bunch of stuff. I've been able to work with legends, John Legend, with uh, Julian Moore, Ken Watanabe. Oh, and that's right, because you're also in the movie Peppermint, right? Well, Peppermint was with Jennifer Garner. Yes, right. I, I was also in that film. But you have the chance you guys will see me there. That was exciting. and. I mean, everything that I do is just exciting, and everything I do is based on a true story. You know, I got to land on my own TV show called American Crime on ABC. It's still on Netflix if you guys want to see it. It's a dope show, everybody. Have you guys checked it out, Fatal? Not yet. Man, I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to put one in the air and go check it out. You have got to check this show out. You know, it won, it won like it won like ten Emmy awards, right? Yeah. When it Emmy first came out, I mean, oh. nominations, um, and um, man, it's just real life, and I feel like, you know, the the fact that you like working on true true stories or based on true stories um just shows you know the passion that you have for your craft and and you know what you think of your craft you know what i mean so um congratulations on your new project uh, and then when you are able to come share with us any news about that new film coming out please come over to the caliente show and let us know first before everybody else all right johnny we'll do we'll do Sandy. all right what do you want to tell all your listeners up there all your you know actors that are trying to call 411 trying to figure out how to be an actor what is your advice to them i always say if it doesn't challenge you it doesn't change you and it's not how you start in life it's how you finish it so so call 411 keep grinding and start researching your craft and getting agents and headshots and managers and acting classes so yeah any questions from you maxima I just want to say that I'm very inspired and I'm um, just very proud of you and just keep going and we're going to be here looking for you go up. <laughs> All right. And tell everybody uh, your handles on social media, where they can find you at. At Mr. Johnny Ortiz, M-R-J-O-H-N-N-Y O-R-T-I-Z. All right, guys, you heard him. Go check him out. Go check out his new movies and stay tuned with the Caliente Show. Here we go, Nico. Oh, we're not done with the interview. Oh, never mind. Right flow, right flow. Right anyway, um, let me ask you something, bro. So, um, you came from the street life and you said that you went to the um, juvenile hall, correct? Correct. What was your charge that put you in juvenile hall? I did a GTA and a high speed chase and assault with a deadly weapon. with assault with a deadly weapon. So, you, you, you were in a. Um, you 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 created great bodily harm to people before um bodily harm you know i think we're all the the whole situation is more we were i was young and wild and stupid and i didn't know what i was doing and i think what matters now is the presence in the moment okay so and and did you grow up with your mother and your father 
or just your mother? You know, um, it I, it is out there in the media, but basically, I grew up with uh, my dad used to beat the crap out of me, and my mom was very religious. So I really didn't have that much uh, connection with my family. I used to be in and out of the streets all the time. And um, I can say now that I, I, have a, I, I have a healthy relationship with my family. Uh, currently, my mom is in the hospital, so she's uh, in really a sick, ill condition. So I just came earlier from there and- Blessings to your mom, bro. Thank you. And, and how, does that, how, did, how, do you, how does that make you feel emotionally? You know, it, it, it kills me, but um, we have to be strong, you know, we have to be role models. We have to breathe one at a time at a time, you know, just. Yeah. And move them. Do you have kids? I don't. Okay. Are you planning on having kids in the future of your life? I don't. So as what would you do differently as a father that your father didn't do for you? I think, you know, just have more communication instead of um, using the belt or the fist. Do you think that you're, do you think that um, him being so violent and, and um, neglecting you um, gave you the drive to be who you are today? I think the drive comes from me. This isn't, I don't seek validation from anyone or not, even from my mom or dad. Um, because for a long time I was seeking validation from my parents and I never got it. So I always thought that the best way was just to seek your own validation, which was what you are. So how did you deal with the? How do you do? How did you get get past the bitterness and the um, the um, the um, abandonment? Or do you think that some part of you still has that re, um, resentment in you? I think um, I am a strong believer that um, people live lonely lonely lives even if they have everything and that lonely life is how you cope with it you know and if you know how to cope with it and you understand it I actually took six months of studying the brain how it works and I feel like if you understand how the brain works you can't really judge anyone right so what would you give what would to the young kid that's the gangbanger or the kid that's been abused I guess, you know, one of the things that I really felt when I was in juvenile hall, there was a lot of kids that um, were facing life that had 200 years. And they were like beautiful artists. They can draw you an acid calendar off their mind. And I think just, it's not only the youth that that are putting the part, but I feel that you know, the youth are there and they want to change, but I feel it's a lot in the arts, in the organizations that have to come in more in hand and more opportunities. And there is organizations out there that I am part of that we go into juvenile facilities in different places to help out and recover kids. And I think it just the more it grows, the more people wanna love and have peace and not divide each other, just look at each other as the humankind, you know, the human race. and. That's what I'm more focused of, you know, the kid, the, the yeah, kids, indeed. the kids are, the kids are there. The kids, yeah. kids want change. Kids, kids get distracted with just wanting to go to Disneyland. I remember I couldn't afford going to Disneyland or going to your studios or mm -hmm. going to go get some drums or something. And I think if you provide that access to the community, that's what helps. Message. It is a Caliente show and that was Flo grilling them. Those were soft <laughs> hey man, I felt like a burger was on the grill. We so, got hot in here, Lo, man. Lo was the, feeling that interview, the, though. The temperature went up about 300 degrees, so, man. Our lives were similar. I'll just tell you that. We had, we had similar lives. Look at you now, though, bro. You want to come up? The come up is real from the bottom to the top, bro. Keep pushing. Hope 2019 continues to get good for you and get better and better and better. Next time we see you, we'll see you on the top getting an award, bro. Hopefully, you'll be like, yo, shout out to the Caliente Show, too, though. Hey! <laughs> One more time, time where to follow you, bro. Mr. Johnny Ortiz, M R J O H N N Y O R T I Z. 
Johnny Ortiz in the building. One more time. Y'all make some noise. It is a Caliente show. That's Radio. We'll be right back. Let's go. What's up? I'm right here at the Caliente show. Right here, just chilling, having a good time. Follow me. I'm Mr. Johnny Ortiz. And check me out. I mean, just see me when you see me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> see me when you see me.